Thank you so much. Well, good afternoon. It's great to see you. Welcome to a special edition of The Big Questions from Harris Academy at Peckham. I'm Nicky Campbell. This week, the nation appeared to lose its patience with the Church of England. It was general outcry of something must be done because of the vote against women bishops. Now, after all, the Church of England has been discussing it for a mere 46 years, and it's 37 years since Parliament legally obliged every employer to treat men and women equally. So, is it any wonder the Prime Minister suggested the church needs a sharp prod? So this morning we're asking just one big question. Should Parliament force the Church of England to appoint women bishops? We've assembled some very distinguished priests of both sexes, campaigners for women bishops, campaigners against politicians and commentators, and they will be cheered on and challenged by our very lively Peckham audience. Now, as always, and we'd love you to, you can join in via our message board. Just log on to bbc.co.uk uh, forward slash the big questions and follow the link. The strength and the weakness of the Church of England is that, well, it's a very broad church from bishops who don't believe in little details like the virgin birth uh, to members of the evangelical wing who say the Bible is literally the unalterable word of God. And that's why this debate has gone on for 46 years, because it was decided that special provision must be made for those who cannot accept a woman as bishop because scripture and theology say it is just plain wrong. Never mind 46 years, we've got 42 minutes to sort it out. As to whether we will or not, I hear my doots. Uh, Christina Reeves, this was a bad week for you. You were extremely upset. How do you think the church looks to the, to the broader society, the society that it seeks to serve? I think it looks appalling, and I was in a state of shock myself, and I think it showed what happened in the vote, is that the House of Laity, the house I belong to, sadly, um, basically betrayed the wider Church of England with the vote. And when, when I tell you, Nikki, that overall in Synod, that it gained a 74% majority, 94% of all the bishops said yes, 77% of all the clergy, and 64% of the laity, and it still fell by six votes in the House of Laity. And we've been debating this out in the diocese. So basically, we have a House of Laity that is unrepresentative of the wider church. There's now a call for a vote of no confidence in the current chair of the House of Laity, who used his position to tell people to vote against so it. So have the democratic processes crisis. of the church been, in a way, hijacked by a kind of small caucus, a zealous, uh, a, a zealous caucus who've kind of uh, <coughs> subverted the whole process. I just think perhaps... Some people think that. I, I think that's um, probably true. I think that the church is actually being held to ransom now by the very conservative evangelicals who are, are using, sort of finding the perfect arrangements as sort of a smokescreen because well. I think basically what they want is never to allow the Church of England to have women as bishops. But, but we need to understand the argument here, and we need to understand, Jerry. we need to understand, you are one of those aforementioned Conservatives. Even we, though we're friends. We, we, uh, evangelicals, we need to understand that these are deeply held conviction of yours. You, you, do, you do not believe a man's, uh, you believe a man's role as leader of the home and leader of the church, and you said, just before, as we were having a cup of coffee with each other, you prayed for guidance, the Synod prayed for guidance, and you believe God answered those prayers. Well, I think as Christians, we believe God does answer prayer. And if we say that we pray that God's will may be done, I don't think we can actually argue when we, we um, get an answer about that. Now, I'm very concerned... You believe God's will was done here. This is what God wanted. That's what I prayed for. That's the answer I've got. I'm trying to... Um, consider whether the, that is in fact God's voice, but if, I've, if, if I pray that God's will may be done, who am I to argue with the outcome? Mm. We've got somebody else who um, does not want to deal with women bishops or be subjected to women in that role. Um, Zoe, why not? 
Thanks, Nikki. Yeah, I believe that men and women are completely equal in value, uh, but I believe uh, similarly that God teaches that men and women have different roles in the church. Um, and I think just to come back on whether the House of Laity is representative, I think it's really helpful to realise that people who voted no on Tuesday, some of those will be opposed to women bishops, but some of those will be for women bishops, but want uh, clearer provision for brothers and sisters in the church who couldn't submit to female bishops. I think part of the vote on Tuesday was about keeping our promises. But I think God is a God who keeps his promises. And as a church, we ought to keep ours. And in 1992, we promised that, that when we made women priests, we would make provision for those who didn't agree with that decision. Certain provisions were put in place. And the legislation we had before us was actually tearing up those um, no, provisions, it, and we felt it was wrong to do that. It was absolutely generous provision, and Jerry, you and I disagree on this. We're friends and old colleagues on Synod, but those arrangements would have worked, and, and the mantra, uh, it wasn't enough, it's actually, it may come, you, it may become to show that what we'll go back and do now, now with what happened on Tuesday, is that the church has voted to have women as bishops, to remove any barriers to women as bishops, and the legislation that I originally wanted, and many people like me, would have delivered that. But no, we walked the extra mile, compromised, put in that statutory code of practice. And the thing is, is that nothing, nothing will satisfy some people. I'm not saying you, Jerry. So should they but leave? Some, no, no, not leave. It just not face now, the fact but... that, <laughs> that there are some people, Nikki, we're trying to, you know, the old cliche of square a circle. Yeah. The basic thing is we Sorry. need to now get women as bishops and then make the provisions um, in the diocese as needed and forget the statutory code Can of I practice. Say, it's not that there's nothing that will satisfy us. So I believe that in the past six years, Years, there have been two other measures and legislation uh, on which those who opposed women bishops were willing to vote yes. No, they, they, they Some, were voted somewhere. on and rejected in General Synod. <laughs> I was there, Zoe. How do you think they this looks down. to be... Jerry, 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 and Martin, in just a yes, second, because you represent the, the Anglo-Catholic way. How do you think, just away from that just for a second, this looks to the wider world? It looks bizarre and uh, arcane and and backwards, and uh, what sort of example does it, does it show the rest it, of the world in terms of equality? It depends whether you um, see the church as a purely human institution, but it's what sort of equality do you want? Do you want an equality that says we have to have interchangeability of function? Do you want a kind of Orwellian um, set up where we're all equal but some are more equal than others? Or do we accept that we're, we're equal in God's sight but we each have gender roles. I mean, why did God make males and females? He didn't make us a race of hermaphrodites, did he? George Pitcher, is that answerable? Well, I think it's, it's quite interesting here that God apparently appears to answer prayers by political party lines, and that's <laughs> extraordinary. <laughs> what we have here, the, the, problem we, the problem we have here, as we so often do, is with well, with Conservatives, uh, but with particularly toxic sorts of Conservatives. I mean, the Conservative Party in Parliament has historically been defined by what it despises, you know, poor people and people called Wayne and stuff. But, the, um, but, and, but the, in the church, you have this intractable uh, Conservative uh, wing, uh, which is in danger. If, 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 it, if the Conservative Party has been nicknamed in the past the Nasty Party, we're in danger of having the Nasty Church. Because actually what it's doing is defining itself, not in gospel terms by what it loves and what it includes and what it embraces, but defining itself by what it despises. And it, and it increasingly, obviously, increasingly obviously despises homosexuals and women and people that aren't it. Well, I think... And that should, doesn't sound to me... I like think, the Zoe, you need to, you need to, come, you you need, you need to answer that, Zoe, well, and then so, I'll speak to Martin. So I clearly don't despise myself. Um, I love women and I'm really passionate about women being involved in ministry in the church. But you're not going to submit to a woman bishop? No way. Uh, well, I guess it wouldn't actually be a problem for myself because I'm a woman, but for those males within the church who couldn't in good conscience submit to a female bishop. So it wouldn't uh, be a I problem. I want them it to be protected and okay. provided for. Protected? But we're not protected. From the ministry of a woman called 
to the, the service <coughs> and, and Sorry, position I mean of the bishop. From Absolutely being pushed out. offensive language, this yes. language of safeguarding yes. and protecting. I, 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 I mean, this is like it. Sally. I'm, this is just. Okay, this well, is, I, this is I, Martin, in a second, I promise. You're in an orderly queue, Martin. Peter Hitchens. Very disorderly, actually. Peter Hitchens. To hear the furious dogmatic rage. Uh, of uh, particularly coming from this quarter here. We're not going to put up with anybody who disagrees with us. Well, it seems that to me, seems, it is exactly the position, it's, it's exactly why there aren't women bishops in the church at the moment, because the faction which wants women bishops wants them at all costs, it wants that total, is, unconditional surrender from its opponents. It's absolutely true, it's observably true. You could have had women bishops last summer, and the whole reason for this farce uh, last week was, was, was because a, a compromise was rejected. I couldn't care less whether women, uh, whether bishops are men or women. All I care about is whether they believe in God. The church, the whole purpose of the church, is to be, is to be the embassy of the kingdom of heaven on earth and in this country. And I see it riven by petty, dogmatic, ideological politics, purists who won't take compromise. The other point of the Church of England, ever since the first Elizabeth, is that it has been based on the idea we do not make windows into other people's souls. We don't force other people to believe what we believe. We accept differences among us. This is a difference your side could accept, but by your furious, intolerant dogma, you forced, you forced us into all this, this, into this, into this division. Not at all. And you, all you, no, you, you, Nikki, you George Nikki, Fisher, who I are describing, that, no. describing Could, political opponents Peter, as toxic. Christina, I don't Christina, political opponents Christina, as toxic. Of course, if it They're reasonable people, but they have to accept that the other side has reason to. Peter, thank you. If it, if it had happened last, if it had happened last summer, of course, it would have been a, a, a lesser form of bishop, wouldn't it? It that... would absolutely have been, and it would have created a church within a church. And one of the things the General Synod has agreed on time and time again is that we don't want to have women as bishops, changing the whole nature of what it means to be a bishop, having two churches. Or nothing. No, it's, it and we're not being the purest. Want. We have gone so far, we have gone the extra mile, and it's the people for whom we are trying to make the arrangement who are being the purest and saying, no, nothing will do. And I would like to ask, what would do? And, but the thing is, Nikki, we don't want to split the church into a church and also have all bishops who are women be second-class bishops. We, that right. is just simply not... Not possible. We're going to bring Martin Dales in. I promised Martin, and it was... It That's was all right, great. it's only about half the time on one book. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter. You know, it's it's great to see you. Spokes, spokesperson for the Catholic group in Synod. And for you, it's all about the, 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 the assurance, isn't it? Uh, this, it's, the, it's partly that, but I think... The, what, let me explain yeah, that to people, you, because, because I, I think people will be interested in this. Mm. So, for you, it's not just a male bishop, but a male bishop who has not ordained women as priests, nor participated in the consecration of a woman bishop, nor been ordained by a woman, nor been consecrated by a woman, nor been ordained by a man who was ordained by a woman. Now, some people might think, is God really that obsessed? <laughs> I think we have to look back at what we've been doing for 2,000 years and look at the views and how we've traditionally brought things through. I have to say, what this vote was actually about, it was rather like David Cameron when he came back from Brussels the other day, said it wasn't good enough. And I think that's actually what w was being said in Synod, that this was not good enough either. I would think we, uh, what we need to do is we need to move on and work out a way in which, and I believe we can, because we did it 20 years ago, I can't see why if we had provision then, we can't have provision now. And the code of practice... If we had voted in favour of this, we would have spent a very long time uh, afterwards trying to work out a code of practice to make it work. So don't think things would have been any different, <laughs> but just a different way around. But that whole um, the business about the apostolic tradition there and, you know, not the, the purity of the, of the male line, to people, to many people watching, obviously not all, but to many people watching, that just looks bonkers. It doesn't in a lot of churches. I mean, if you go to other churches, like the Catholic Church and the Orthodox churches, that's, that is the way life has been. And we are part of a big church, and we're not just the little church of England. Nicky, mm. a lot of things look bonkers to people outside the church. The whole Christian religion looks bonkers to an awful lot of people who are increasingly intolerant of and contemptuous of it. But the point is it is based upon very, very fundamental, passionately held beliefs. I don't agree with what you say. 
I, I, it, it simply doesn't matter to me. But I accept that it matters to you. Mm. And that is the point, accepting that it matters to you and accepting that it matters to you, compromising on it for the sake of the Christian religion instead of having a political battle for your own joy. Reverend Rose is here. Uh, uh, welcome. <coughs> Good morning, <Thank> Reverend Rose. <laughs> Welcome. You've come, you've come from, <laughs> from ministering. Listen, I'm, I'm sure you've caught the gist of our discussion. Mm. And, I, and I'm sure you've heard this, this matters yes. deeply to Martin, this matters deeply to Jerry, it matters deeply to Zoe. Why should they have to change? They need provision. Yes. They need some alternative arrangement. They don't want women bishops. I have no doubt that it matters deeply to them and it matters deeply to us too. The reality is uh, there is never ever going to be anything good enough for them. That's, that's a fact. And we may as well be honest and open and say that. Really what they're saying um, tied up behind theological arguments, etc., is not in my lifetime. And, and so the, the, you know, we had a complicated claw, um, motion before us at the Synod. And the reason it was so complicated is actually because Synod and, and, and all those who are working behind the scene have been trying for years. It wasn't just yesterday. They have been trying to, for years to hold everybody together, to try and get the best thing on the table as possible. Now, I actually believe that we have gone too far. I really do believe that. We've wasted a lot of time. And I, other Anglican provinces, just to, as parenthesis, have uh, no problem with this, do you? Exactly. They, they embrace the fact that we're going to have women and we have women. And so what I Swaziland hope, included. They've just done that. What, <laughs> I, what I really, really hope is that our church will have the courage of its conviction. And when it comes before the synod again, that it will come with a single clause that says, we are going to have women bishops serving as bishops within the and church. And if you don't like it, and no, leave? No, no, no. We are all adults. We must behave like mature adults. I think we actually In the same it. way that we have think, behaved like mature yeah. adults, okay. Over the years, I've seen women who are now my grandmothers who have waited patiently and the church has kept saying no and no and no and they've stayed with the church. Now, what's so special why you think you yeah. can't stay with the church? I would like to think... Uh, I would like to think... I think, um, I think it, one of the things I think is worth exploring is what they're trying to do in Wales, which is basically to have two measures. One for provision and the other for um, Episcopal ordination of women, running in parallel. I think this is so something... Two bishops. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, two arrangements, two for, arrangements. For, for within a thing. And I don't see if we can manage to sort out it 20 years ago. I cannot see how we can't sort it What's out What's the now. problem with two we, bishops? We, we didn't actually sort it out 20 years ago. This, this silly fudge that we created um, has left women in a position of being second class. <laughs> and, and that's a fact. And so I hope we don't do that again. And the sad thing is that there were many women who were willing to make that sacrifice just so that we could hold everyone together. But you know but what? But they say it's in the Bible, this. It is also in the Bible that if someone gorges your eye out, you take the other eye out of them. No, now, are we, gonna, are we going to do we that? An Bible, eye for an you? eye. An eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. No, no, no. OK? No, Jesus, no, Jesus said... You've heard it was said an eye for an eye. Exactly, Jesus, but it was said in Torah. I say to it you, was Jesus said in the Torah. That. Exactly. Now, that. if Jesus was able to look at the Torah, which is something that was held over hundreds of years, and if he was able to look at it and say, actually, in this particular context, this does not make sense. What did Jesus Let's say? Do something what did different. Jesus say about w women in Ecclesia pos the possibility of women in uh, ecclesiastical authority. Did he say anything? He about said that? remarkably little, actually. Did he? <laughs> yeah, there is a bit of a literacy. The first the witness is. to the risen Christ was a woman, yeah, Mary so, Magdalene, yeah. and was sent an apostolic mission, an apostolic mission to tell her brothers and sisters by the risen Christ. Now, if that isn't the Christ giving women the most important apostolic mission that can possibly be conceived in the whole of history, then how dare you suggest that church tradition, a bunch of men in the first and second centuries, can trump that? You think from that question. Peter Hitchens.
No one says that. Think from that rhetoric that what was being discussed is whether women could be bishops or not. Well, well, I agree with that. It isn't. But it is not, it's it's absolutely was can raised, I, Please, Peter. can I just finish that point? This is absolutely not what is, is at issue. The question of whether women should be bishops or not is closed. They will be bishops. It's a question yes. of under what conditions they will be bishops. That's all that's being argued about. All your rhetoric is designed to obscure that simple fact. A lot of the arguments, Peter, a lot of the arguments... By the, supporters of, by, the, by the supporters of an absolutely intolerant demand to have women bishops if I may, at all Peter, costs and without any... If I may, mercy general whatever to George Hicks, are you may? A general <laughs> synod last week, uh, the discussion was not only about provision for those in conscience who couldn't accept women's minist ordained ministry, never, never mind episcopacy, what? but it regurgitated, it rehashed a lot of the frankly misogynistic arguments of the church of the last mm. 2,000 years uh, to resist women being uh, bishops at all. I agree with you, you know that's not that true. the matter is agreed, However, but I'll these issues be keep no, being no. raised. I, I, if I may, I if I may, Sally, please, in a second, I want to get <laughs> Ben Bradshaw in because he's uh, uh, an elected representative, as the MP for Exeter, of course. Sorry. And um, I'm just wondering if they can't sort this out, Ben Bradshaw, is, does, do, do they need more than a a nudge from our politicians? Well, I think the first point to make is the Church of England, because of its established status, has a very unique relationship with the state through Parliament. Members of the House of Lords, schools, yeah, yeah, etc. Exactly. It's answerable mm. to Parliament. It's unique in that, in that regard. And what struck me this week was the unanimity within not just the House of Commons, but also the House of Lords, in dismay and just in comprehension that although 42 out of 44 dioceses voted overwhelmingly in favour of women bishops, it couldn't get through Synod. So there's clearly something wrong with Synod. And I don't think Parliament wants to act, but because of the very special relationship that we have with the established church, I think if the very clear message went out from Parliament this week, that if this is not resolved quickly, it can't be allowed to you know, rumble on for another five or ten years. It has to be resolved within the next few months. If it's not, then I think Parliament will do something, yes. Um, Sorry. Um, well, the point I've been trying to make for the last half hour, and thankfully you have got some, a number of very eloquent men to make it for me, <laughs> is, that, is that actually, as a woman priest, um, the arguments we were raising on Tuesday, too many of those arguments were about your objections to women in, as priests, and you were trying to reassert their validity, which we discussed in 1994. Exactly. We agreed that I can be a priest, and I was made a priest, I was there, and uh, I know that happened, and, and I know that it's difficult for you, and, and it's difficult for, for many within, or some within the church. Is it difficult for you, Zoe, that still? Women as priests? Women as priests. So mm. I, yes, I myself mm. wouldn't want to go to a church where mm. a female was the church just, leader. But, but I understand. Why not? That... Just, for people just tuning in and joining us, just remind us again, why not? Because for lots, lots of people, this is a unique need, yeah, concept. Yeah. Why not? Well, because I believe that the Bible does teach that men and women are to mm. play different roles in the church, mm. and that doesn't uh, make women less valuable. How do you feel about the Queen being the, the, the titular head of the church? Is well, that, actually, is Elizabeth, right? I think Elizabeth I changed it from head of the church to Supreme Governor. Governor wow. to acknowledge that there's, Jesus there's was the head of the church. Oh, Sally, so, so, Sally so I'm the, so sorry. The problem is actually that, you know, while I respect your views, we've decided as a church that we do are. Do you respect to... your views, really? I, I respect that you don't have really, them. Do you? I, res I don't agree with them. <laughs> I respect Not behind closed doors, you don't. I don't believe so. But the issue, is, <laughs> the issue is that we have agreed that we will have women priests. We, will, we have also agreed that we will have a place for those who disagree with women priests. And that is where we should have been discussing the, the issue. We should, we should, this discussion should have been on um, the clause and, and whether or not it had adequate provision. And I have yet to hear a reasoned argument why that did not have provision for, for those within the Church of England who disagree with it. I've been on air a number of times this week with Conservative evangelicals and with Anglo-Catholics. I've asked all of them, what would you like? And none of them have given an answer which is as succinct in terms of what they would like that would actually allow a woman in my position who became a bishop to, to function on an equal level to the men. I did express it earlier, actually. There is a biblical, there is a biblical, well, there is a biblical illiteracy in our church, and that is deeply worrying, that there are <laughs> clergy who are coming out of, chur being churned out of theological colleges with this illiterate, illiterate view of the Bible and teaching it to, 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 to our lay people. When lay people and women say to me that they ought not to be in a role that is giving um, authority over a man, what on earth are you doing on the General Synod? Yes. What are you doing? 
if you follow through, follow through your argument, you should not be there because you're making decisions <laughs> about over men. over men. It is ridiculous. It does not make sense. But you, did you think we're tolerant oh. in what you just said to the opinion It doesn't of make Absolutely sense. Absolutely no tolerance at all. It doesn't make you just, sense. You just, you just, you dismiss. Your it opponents. does not make sense. I'm neutral sir. in this argument. I watch you and I see you dismiss, it does not make sense. dismiss with contempt your opponents. That's it the source of the problem. Sense. Your contempt for that. them. I think, I, I think Some of them do, a lot of them do. I respect you enormously, but I do disagree with you. I think, I think we as a church, as the Anglican church, have agreed that uh, we, will, we will uphold a, a range of different perspectives. I How much I that. passionately disagree with it. I, don't have I, can, a I understand with that, that these, these views are found from Scripture and they're done with as much intellectual <coughs> integrity as I try to do with, from mine, and I've come to a different conclusion. I do not want no, to eradicate people no. Who, no. who disagree with me. There I want are, to try and conclude the whole area. You, you think it's a, massive, it's a massively erroneous reading of Scripture. That's the point. Interpretation Look, of Scripture. Let me get back to you, Ben Brasher, and Ruth as well. I'll tell you what, we haven't heard from Ruth Gledel from the time, so let me. Let me ask you this, because clearly it's all being, you know, trotted out again here, and fascinating as it is, one doubts that it's going to come to a tidy conclusion any time soon. Do you agree with Ben that ultimately there may have to be some political influence exerted? He's spoken the most sense of anyone here, really, because... Um... The, you have well, a fan, Ben, behind you. <laughs> <laughs> and as for Peter saying, um, talking about people treating views with contempt, I mean, talk about pot calling kettle black. But I think that... The evangelicals really should have been careful what they prayed for. I'm not sure they've got a garden big enough to contain the elephant that they've now acquired within it. Because the fact is, you, you, you got what you wanted. And I think that there will be action now in Parliament. Parliament will not sit back and let the church get away with this. And it's all very well to think of the church as it has been for many, many years, has been separate and divorced from public opinion, from the secular world. I mean, nobody even had heard of what the House of Laity was before this happened, but now everybody knows what the House of Laity is, and I think their opinions of it are not very good. And I'm afraid, like it or not, Parliament will intervene if the church does not get its act together, <laughs> and that what you will probably be landed with now in the long term is a single clause measure, actually in the short term, probably within two years. Mm. And it won't be the church forcing the opponents out, but it would be the opponents being put on the line. You know, if you mean what you've been saying for the last 10 years, you know, stay. Will there be provision? Go. I don't think there will be, no. I agree with Ruth, though. They, yeah. don't, they don't intend there to be provision. The other, the other thing, it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm on gave, the General Synod. Parliament gave, Parliament no, gave the Church provision. of England the, the General Synod because it had washed its hands of no, the Church's internal no, affairs just, after the sorry, 1928 Nicky, prayer book row. It did create it. Why are you keep interrupting? The, 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 the Parliament <laughs> now... Was, because when, you when, keep uh, on talking now, nonsense, now, Peter. Parliament now... I'll carry on not being interrupted by you. Parliament now is, 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 is saying, we've given the Church of England this complicated constitution, which it has followed perfectly lawfully, and though it's followed it lawfully, we don't agree with the outcome, so we're going to intervene. That seems to me to be fundamentally lawless and unconstitutional. It's I don't know quite, quite what, the, what the moral it's force is behind it. And the we other thing is, that what we're saying is here, the Church of England's biggest mistake in its entire history was to go with the flow of public opinion in 1914 and be in favour of that war. That actually did more damage to the Church of England than anything we can, we can do or you can do or anybody Let, can let's do. Let's not go no, there right now. The whole point, about, the whole point about that was everybody <laughs> thought it was right. OK. Just the same way as everybody thinks this is well, right. Well, the thing it's is... Not, it's, when the, everybody thinks the, the something thing is, is right, that's when thoughtful people say, hang on a minute, The thing is, Ruth, it, it is... It, it is uh, oh, let, let me put it to you guys. It is the law of the land, the Sexual Discrimination Act in 1973 and then 2010, the Equalities Act, 1975 it was, then 2010, the Equalities Act, and... And one in four primary schools in England, or Church of England schools, one in seven secondary schools. In a, you know, your, your bishops have a, a, a unique place, actually, in the Western world in, in legislating in, in, as lawmakers. 26 big, beefy males uh, there in, in the House of Lords. So, ultimately, it's, it's, it's entirely uh, Parliament's business because you're so interwoven with our society. Is that not the case? Well, <clears throat> we are interwoven with society. You talk about all the church schools. The heads of a lot of those church schools are women. If you're talking about jobs, How do you feel about that? It, well, if you're talking about jobs, we talk about equality of opportunity to apply for jobs. The question is mm -hmm. whether you believe that being a bishop is a job that you apply for, mm -hmm. or whether it is a calling from God. Now, the point is, what the church is neither. No, no, please. It's neither. The Church it's a of England position people are appointed. Christina, to. just a moment, please. Um, the Church of England has, ha or Parliament, has devolved to the Church of England, initially to the Church Assembly, subsequently to General Synod, 
power to control its internal affairs. It has devolved to the Scottish Assembly power to sort out Scottish affairs. Now, if Parliament subsequently doesn't like what these devolved um, assemblies do, it has already devolved the powers, and I think it has to live with it. Let's go to see what audience think about this while you just uh, gather your thoughts. <laughs> Everyone, yes, good morning. Um, good afternoon, sorry. Good afternoon. It's a hard um, habit to break. <laughs> as we've seen in the law before, not only in this country but in other countries, changing the law doesn't always change the attitude. I think that even if Parliament were to pass a law forcing them, the Church of England, to have female bishops in equal standing to male bishops, it wouldn't change the fundamental and arbitrary sexism of the Church in this decision. Fundamental and arbitrary sexism, yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> if Parliament is going to uh, address the issue, then it strikes me that from the point of view of equality, it can't actually discriminate against the Church of England, so it would have to make sure that all re religions and faiths and sects uh, apply equal opportunities. I think the established church, you would argue, would be a different mm. position, Ben uh, Bradshaw. Uh, uh, that, that, well, We're not going to see transgendered imams any time soon. On, on no. that, sir, no. I mean, the, the only way, I think, morally, oh. that Parliament could discriminate is to disestablish the Church of England. That's another issue. P Peter, you, make an interesting, you just picked up an interesting I point there. I think legally there is a difficulty. I think Tony Baldry was saying that, um, this morning, I think he knows more about this than most of us, that if, you, that if you legislate on this, then you probably would have to legislate for other religious bodies in the same way. It would be interesting asking uh, mosques to appoint female imams, wouldn't it? See how far you get with that. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, in our, in our debate, there has not been real honesty. And the real honesty is that we are never, ever going to agree on this matter. I'm never, ever going to change your mind. You're never so, going to change my mind. Bye-bye? Uh, no, oh, no. Oh, so no. We, we need to learn to live together. Even our Lord was able to say, let the wheat and the tears grow together until the day of harvest. What is this great urgence for you to pull it apart? and go your separate ways. Why it doesn't you, make sense. You, would you be tempted to join the Catholic Church? Not at all. If this happened. No, because... Roman uh, Catholic. Or, which one? Because so Roman many Catholic, versions. The Roman Catholic no. Church. If this what, happened, what I think with no provision. The, the, the position in terms of the other thing about establishment is that we are not a state church like we have in other countries. We do not receive any money from government other than through what is grant-aided, which makes a very different relationship. I gather that the Foreign Office has a faith toolkit which it sends out to countries that it wants to adjust their views on faith and things. I gather that might be quite a useful look for Parliament before they even go down this road. Nikki, can I say something about what the Synod did um, in there uh, and people like Jerry and Martin who, who didn't like the package of the legislation? Yes. Is speaker after speaker, I'm not saying Jerry and Martin did, but speaker after speaker of those opposed said, we don't trust the bishops, we don't trust the church, we don't trust our legal officers, we don't trust them. Mm. And what Rowan Williams said is, what, when you've said to your neighbour, I don't trust you, what do you say next to them? And basically, I mm. think now, um, those who are opposed to this and have completely refused to accept all the arrangements that we've tried painstakingly over years to provide <coughs> is that is that if you don't trust us, what are you doing in a church where you do not trust the authorities, you do not trust <laughs> the people put in position of you? And well. basically, mm. is that one of the things about it is that not only, as Rose said, do we need to carry on living with each other, we need to rebuild relationships of trust. And I think what we saw you have on Tuesday is that you have we were fundamentally different a, readings of the scriptures. Yeah. Well, you have absolutely, fundamentally different interpretations of the roles of women in in, in the church. It's it's Ruth. It's irreconcilable, isn't it? It is the circle that can't be squared, and the Archbishop of Canterbury downwards, everyone in the church has recognised this, really, for the last 20 years. And in a way, this, what's happened, in a, in a perverse kind of way, might be for the best, because um, I, I think practically, just for a minute, to get into the slight technical details, there's this thing called the Act of Synod that set up the flying bishops, which would only require a 50% majority, not a two-thirds majority, to rescind. It's fair, there's two motions to do that now apart. OK, that's for par pa parishes that don't want uh, to be ministered by that's a woman. That's right, the flying yeah. bishops yeah, look a, after an uh, parishes. Yes. Male. Well, flying yes. bigots, as we sometimes call them. <laughs> and um, that, that, those, those um, <laughs> acts of synod might very well now be rescinded, <laughs> which would leave the um, Catholics and, uh, without the protection they currently get. 
a slightly different situation for the um, Conservative Evangelicals. Get it and then you would get, go, get, probably get a single clause measure through the Synod. I'm just wondering about other issues. I mean, there's a lot of money. The evangelical churches as well are incredibly successful, and a lot of money some goes are, into the. Some. Goes, some are, and a lot of money goes into the coffers for the evangelical churches. So I, I wonder if that muddies the water well, of George Pitcher. Put all the evangelical churches in one, in one lump. Does that together? muddy the holy water here? Yes, the evangelical churches are in favour of women. Yes, would support women bishops. I think, I think, it's just I think we're very often too conscious of who's pulling the purse strings. Yes. Who's pulling the purse strings? But in, but in who's pulling the purse strings? Can I also make the point that if if Parliament intervened in the workings of the Church of England, that would be a disaster. If Parliament felt it could get a foothold in controlling the business of the Church of England, then, uh, then a lot of parliamentarians, a lot of MPs would be delighted to have a role in controlling what the Church of England does. George, the Church of England is at its please. best. George, that, wait a minute. Gets wait a minute. Like, you wait a minute for me once. Well, well, no, 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 you've no, just no, been no, talking no, for a great deal of time, No, no, you have, you have monopolised this debate, I'm along not. with him over there. <laughs> you have. Hey, Excuse me. <laughs> love thy neighbour. <laughs> All I wanted to say, really, was that the church is at its best when it's a thorn in the side of the state, and to have an archbishop that's able to criticise freely welfare cuts or whatever is going on in Parliament is, is a huge and respectable and honourable freedom. If the Parliament starts interfering, we're in trouble. Caroline, what about the, what, the broader issues here? We have the, the coming down the rails towards us, we have the whole debate about gay marriage. Is, is the, for example, is the, is the church's position now undermined as a... As a, as, as a player in that debate because of this. I'm not sure whether it's undermined. I think it's more a case of if the church is very busy, lots of passionate people talking about this, they don't have time or space to consider anything else. And in the next mm. five mm. years, we're going to need them. As George said, we need them to be a thorn in the side of our legislature on many, many issues. But whilst every time the Church of England is in the news, it's about this. They can't do that. Ben? Well, I think, I, think, um, I think the incoming Archbishop of Canterbury made that very point. I mean, he said that this vote has damaged the moral authority of the Church yeah. and it will make it less uh, able for the Church to comment with any authority and for people to take the Church yeah. seriously on, on other... And I say that as an Anglican and as an Anglican who supports the established status. I care deeply about having a servant church in this country that is there for everybody. That's the most wonderful thing about the Church of England and I will defend that. But I I think the Church of England is damaging that itself by this its attitude well, towards women. There's another wonderful thing about the Church of England. If I could just make one last point, then I'll shut up. Which is this: <laughs> that it, 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 it discovered after the after the horrors of the of the 17th century and 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 the and the 16th century as well, it discovered that a very important discovery for England in general was that when dogma conflicted with kindness, then kindness should actually win. And what I see on the side of those who are, 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 are facing me here saying we must have women bishops, not just we must have women bishops, they could have them, women bishops on our terms, is dogma without kindness. And that is why they're causing all this trouble. Dogma without kindness, I see intolerance and I see, I, see, I see rudeness flowing across at the other side from this side, over and over again. Right, right. This is madness. Um, let me, let me, let me say again. this. <laughs> let me say this. I don't need to speak for parliamentarians because they can speak for themselves. But what I see from parliamentarians on this particular matter is an overwhelming sense of disbelief that the people whom they represent in their constituencies, the majority of whom would like to see women in leadership within the church. Well, how can you maintain this your position as the established church of this country if you flout the values of the Absolutely. broader society which you seek? to Absolutely. represent. Absolutely, and, and, and that is something the church is going to have to what, wrestle with. What we saw is that the, uh, the House of Laity is now holding the, the wider Church of England to yes. ransom. It no, doesn't represent the wider membership of the Church of England, and we must do something Jerry. to change that. No, please. I think we've heard a lot of silly things said today. That legislation that we debated what on silly Tuesday... Things, Jerry? So, no, I'm just about to explain. Things. May I explain, please? The, the legislation we had was doomed to fail for a number of reasons. One is it rescinded the provisions that were made in 1992, which we had promised wouldn't be rescinded. We then said that a parish that disagreed with what was going on could issue a letter of request. Now, if you were an Anglo-Catholic parish, you were being asked to petition a bishop whose orders you doubted, to ask her to delegate power that you didn't think she had to somebody who agreed with you, and if he agreed with you, he wouldn't be able to accept it. So far as conservative evangelicals were concerned, we could petition a woman bishop, no problem with that, but she would be asked to appoint a conservative evangelical bishop 
who agreed with us, but there aren't any conservative evangelical bishops who agree with us. Every so-called evangelical bishop on Tuesday voted in favour of the motion. I said it the but wouldn't it be acceptable to come into those parishes? No, they would not Well, why not? You would actually get, Sally. You get more provision through the, through the things that you've just disagreed thrown away. Are. We promised you that we would choose, find you a bishop who agreed with your particular theology. But there aren't any. Well, we totally, well, we would, we would have Sally's to... Sally's going to find you to one. To meet that, we would have to appoint some. The, the irony How do you is, do that? The irony is, I, I honestly believe if we'd waited another five years in 1994 that we wouldn't have found such a compromise. And I think, actually, you'll be in a worse position uh, if we wait five years, because, because I think there's been such outrage at, at this particular but, vote. Lady here, you, and you had your hand up earlier on, so uh, let's get to this lady first. Hello to you. Hello. Um, I'd just like to say I'm a bit uh, bemiffed here. After, uh, I've, I've used to be um, uh, on the Bishops' Council for about 16 years, so I know quite a few of the bishops at the moment. I'm a bit miffed that... What is this really all about? Are we, we've had a vote, and the vote, of course, has been positive for the evangelicals, but mm. negative for those who, who are for women bishops. However, is it really about A, or is it about Z? What's Z? A for women bishops, but is there something, a hidden agenda going on here? Because there's, there's this fight. We've got to have women bishops. Fine, I'm totally not against women bishops. I'm neither am I for women bishops. I feel as though I'm sitting here and abstaining. What is this really about? Is there a hidden agenda? What's going to happen? Yeah. Is so, there George a Pitcher, hidden it's a agenda? What, uh, wait, wait, George Pitcher, answer that. What is it? What, what we're witnessing, it, you're right. Uh, that, that, that there is something of a proxy going on. This argument is, at the surface, concealing under the surface what's going on, and that is a fight for the Church of England's soul between, uh, if you like, uh, a, a many, what many would describe as a liberal establishment within the Church of England and the Conservatives who have for, formed this odd, I won't say unholy, <laughs> alliance between Anglo-Catholics and co Conservative Evangelicals to resist that change, and it's an alliance which is odder, frankly, than the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats in Parliament. So <laughs> if it's about women bishops, if it's actually about okay. bishops, it what is actually will happen? about the I, I mission. Got, the mission of the church. Mm -hmm. a, a young man, a Muslim background, who has come to faith, has sent me an, an email um, yesterday saying how devastated he was at the vote. He said, "I have grown up seeing women in ministry, and that that they are saying no to women." I find devastating. Half of those training, please, half of those training for the ministry at the moment are, are women. What about, why, why not tap into, and a, th a third of priests, why not tap into that wealth of talent and then you can, you can flourish? But half of the people training for ministry are um, conservative evangelicals. Mm. And do they, are they against we, it, we do you think? We should not speak. We shouldn't I think they'll be staying in the church because of Tuesday's vote. Because, OK, as, as we said they'll right feel the beginning, They'll feel they have a future. You believe God's... You believe God, God's will was done? Well, God's will continue to be done on this, do you think? Well, I'm, I'm not railing and saying God's will wasn't done. If, when people pray that God's will may be done, we make the assumption that God answers their prayers. Hmm. And I assume everyone's Ruth, praying final, that. Final word. Can, I just, can I just ask um, um, the people over there? In an Episcopally-led church, oh, <laughs> in Episcopally-led church, um, which has We're an right all-male episcopate, um, why didn't you follow the lead of your 42 bishops who voted in favour? We have we to leave it there. Listen, as ever, the debate will continue on Twitter and behind me on our message board. We're back on January.